Ring lights have become a household name during the pandemic for everything from Zoom meetings, to FaceTime dates, to obviously making viral TikTok videos. But do you actually need one to do any of that? We talked to two photographers to find out. My passion like as a photographer has always been about light. So I love like geeking out about it. So many people come up to you and they're like, oh, I look so haggard. And I'm like, baby, it's not you, it's the light. <laughs> You're okay, you're fine. To be a good photographer or video maker, you have to know what light does, how to get the best light quality. And that's where ring lights come in. It's the reason they're so popular with influencers is that most of the lighting that we have like in our world and our life sucks. Like the overhead headlights, the directionality, it makes us look like we have raccoon eyes. And so it's this really great way to dial it up instantly. It can really brighten you up, gloss you up and give you that kind of high key light, which is like really bright. A lot of vloggers and influencers has, have kind of established this very recognizable, very specific look by using ring lights. Doesn't mean it's the most natural or best way to light yourself. People see it everywhere and they want to mimic it. I mean, to me, the thing about it, it gives you this alien otherworldly vibe when you bring it really close. So if you're making a TikTok about being an exotic alien or like wanting to show up in this power girl way, it's totally amazing for that. That very stereotypical ring light look is when the ring light is right in front of your face. It's very brightly illuminated, super even across your face. And you have this fall off from light to dark that occurs on the cheeks and under the chin. And you also have that catch light in the eye that's shaped like a circle right around the pupils. To me, it looks a little like an alien being. It's not quite natural. I don't know why people like that, but, but that's what people love. For me, I'm usually trying to just like show up as me and have light be a little bit more natural in vibe. So it's not my go-to. So if let's say I didn't want to look like a sexy alien on video, which I usually don't, <laughs> how can I use a ring light and not have that effect? To me, the best solution for most people with a ring light, like how to really use it effectively are two things. One, you wanna think of it as like icing on the cake. So you wanna have a base layer of light. I use the ring light as one small part of my overall lighting setup. I have a big professional light kind of providing even light to the background. And then I have the ring light off to the side, a little high up, bouncing a little off the wall so I can get some nice pleasing light on my face while the background remains more or less evenly lit. Being in your living room, you have natural ambient light coming in around there and then you just add it as this extra layer. That is a great way because you're not dealing with all the weird shadows, the circular kind of fuzzy shadows that it can create. The second thing is that you can change up the angle. And so you can change it from this straight on light, which our brains don't really love because generally speaking, light comes from the sun. It usually comes at this 45 degree angle. So that's what really makes our brains happy. So you can change the angle of it and it instantly becomes more flattering. You want it high enough so that it's not kind of shining in your glasses and creating reflections like that but you want it low enough that you do get that catch light in the pupil, which is really half the point of a light like this to begin with. Gia, obviously you're a professional photographer and so you have all the equipment to make the lighting as good as possible. But for somebody who doesn't have those, what tips do you have just as far as using a ring light or even just the lighting they may already own? I'm so glad you asked this because the whole key to lighting is that you use what you have and you learn how to make what you have work, learning some of these key principles. So like never take a bulb to the face. I have an acronym called SAIL, which is the type of light you want, which is soft, angled from above, in front and large. And so one of the best lighting sources that we almost all have is a window. Putting yourself very close to a window, you can get really beautiful light. You can make very expensive lights look bad. You can conversely make very cheap lights look good. It's just a matter of understanding the way light works and what you really like for yourself. When they're buying a ring light, what sort of qualities were you guys looking for in our picks? Wirecutter's Guide to Ring Lights was written by the wonderful Milani Panola, and I helped her out in testing some ring lights and identifying what the key qualities that we would be looking for in ring lights are. 
The main things we were looking for in a ring light are number one, size. Generally, the larger the ring light, the more pleasing quality of light you're gonna get. Of course, you don't want a giant massive light on your desk. The larger ones are more expensive, so we tried to find a middle ground there. We looked at just the package of accessories, so light stands, you can mount it easily around your desk or in a room. They also come with little phone mounts that you can stick inside the middle of the ring light and mount your phone. We looked at general usability and which one seemed most user-friendly. Another thing we were looking at is the color accuracy. When you have a lower accuracy light coming from an LED, it can create kind of weird color casts, especially on skin tones. Some of the other features you're gonna want are the simple ability to dim the light to make it brighter or darker, depending on how much light you want on your face. And you also wanna be able to adjust the color temperature of the light. And really what that means is adjusting whether the light is a warm color, more towards orange, or a cooler color, more towards blue. And this is really useful if you have other lights in your room. You wanna be able to match the tone of your ring light to whatever bulb you have in those other lights. Do you think that people even need a ring light? It depends on their goals. If you want to be able to create content in different places in your home, let's say, and you don't wanna be dependent on a large window, I would say a ring light is a great option because it's portable, it's easy, and you can really take it wherever you wanna go just to add a little bit more light. I still think a ring light is a decent option. Again, it's relatively inexpensive, the setup is fairly easy, and it does provide a quality of light that isn't so easy to get from something like a desk lamp or a floor lamp or definitely not from overhead lighting. I do think that if you have good natural light near your computer where you're taking meetings, maybe there's no point to getting a ring light. But if you're having meetings when it's dark out in the evening or at night, then you need some artificial light and a ring light could be a great option for you. If you have a big, beautiful window and you know that you can just make content there all the time, people really can use whatever they have, but I do feel like a ring light can be a great option and don't let super fancy schmancy industry people tell you that it's not cool. It is <laughs> all about what your goals are and you can make any light really look beautiful if you know just how to maneuver it. I also, as I'm yeah. speaking to you, I'm, I am using window light as uh, There uh, you go, as, yeah. <laughs> just that natural, just that natural lighting. Hi, I'm Dory Shevlin, the host of this video, and now I am perfectly lit. If you like what you saw, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks, bye.